I'm gonna get short and I'm just calling Kong. Kong has entered the Valley of the Beast. Yes, sir. Straight from Kong Island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Midwest Kong, how you doing, brother? I'm good, man. Appreciate it, man. Man, uh, I've been watching the Instagram. Mm -hmm. And what I wanna say about your Instagram, people don't get this. I wanna talk a little bit about you, but first thing I'm saying, people don't get this, it's very important. It's a whole lot of people lifting weights. You look over Instagram, every time you can see a million motherfuckers lifting weights, yeah. curling, squatting, bench pressing, lifting weights, lifting weights. And they think that because they lift weights, they're going to be instantly famous, yeah. or people are going to recognize you and say, wow, look at that guy, he can lift this weight. And Kong, it just don't work like that. No. They have to have something more because it's just too many in my yeah. yeah. Uh, they have to have, they have to be able to talk mm -hmm. and say something that'll keep people interested. Mm -hmm. Because lifting weights, I mean, it, it's a million motherfuckers doing yeah. that. And I noticed your Instagram, you, of course, lift weights, but you have something to say. Yeah. Uh, that's what I, that's, that's, Super hard. You are being you. I don't see you as a copy of anybody else. You don't be nobody but calm. Yeah. And that is super important. Thank you. Now, I, now, now that I got that out the way, you uh, you brought me a gift. Yeah, I did. I seen uh, I seen one time you posted a gentleman from actually my my, my hometown. Uh, he sent you some chucks, and I said, oh man. He liked Chucks too. So when, when I decided to uh, stalk you, catch your <laughs> attention, uh, I was like, man, when I come down there, we're we'll gonna get some Chucks. Now, to the bet, now, I, he shouldn't have nothing that looked like this. I tried, I, maybe I tried to design them the best way I could to fit your, your persona, so I hope these are. Man, right. so these are custom design. Yeah, yeah, I hope these are. Right. By Kong himself. Oh, shit. Well, I, I can tell you right now that I don't have any like this. Try to get the Superman thing for you. Superman colors, the Superman from Compton, and ISYMF face embroidered right there on the motherfucking side. Now that, that is bad ass. Now you don't got those, right? Hell no. All right. I'll be the only kid on my block <laughs> <laughs> with the ISYMFS Superman colors converse. Yeah. Brother, that, that's one hell of a gift. You know me very well. Yes, sir. I'm a converse wearing motherfucker since 1962. <laughs> Been wearing converse. Appreciate it, Don. Yeah, appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Now, I want to know a little bit more about Kong, the story, because uh, it's a very interesting one. I was going through your Instagram, mm -hmm. and I noticed that you said that a little bit of your personal story, you had been shot. Stabbed. Stabbed! Mm -hmm. Nine times. Nine times. Nine times. Uh, he was a little upset with me, I believe. Yeah, yeah I believe. Yeah, I think he's trying to get uh, rid of it. I wasn't his favorite, so. Yeah, that was back in 2004. The interesting thing about that story was, um, you know, and I try, to, I try to explain this to people. Energy is everything. So the, the way what you put out is, is, is no, don't get no more real than that, is what you give in. And at that particular time in my life, I was putting out that type of behavior. And uh, just quick aggression. Everything was settled with aggression. You know, the, you know the way I grew up. I grew up, and a lot of things that my mom didn't know I witnessed or remember was when my father abused me. So every time there was a situation where loud talking, it made me feel like I was in danger. So Absolutely. that started. That started probably 
because I was a little scary little kid. I grew up, I grew up in the 80s and 90s, so I grew up when, when I had asthma before inhaler, so I was a sickly kid. So my mother at that time, I don't care what you do, you play football. Play football, have asthma attack, go to the doctor, come back, play football. So I grew up on sports, grew up trying to get that into me, which I became you know, a decent enough football player, wrestler, things like that. What happened was, second grade, I'll never forget, this kid was yelling at me, and I was had my back to him, and he's yelling at me, yelling, yelling. And I can just remember my father when, I remember one particular incident where he hit my mother when he was yelling. And I turned around and hit him. And dropped him. So after that, that was like, that was like a drug almost. So now it's easy to, to behave this way. So you grow up, you start, you know, meeting people, maneuvering around your, your area, meeting this gang, that gang, and you start feeling comfortable in your space. I had an issue where I was, and I'm calling it an issue, because a lot of people think that street cred is a thing. It's not. So I had a thing back then where I thought I was cool because I was familiar with different gangs because, and I talked to OG Silverback about this a lot. Sports brought us together. So when I lived, grew up in the Crip neighborhood, and back then the Midwest was starting to really get heavy with that. We're heavy with the gangs and the, uh, you know, the crack cocaine era. Yeah. So I grew up in a Crip neighborhood. Then I would stay with my grandfather in the um, summers where he was with the folk GD neighborhood. Then I moved to a blood neighborhood. But I never said, never like jump ship. I was always like, that's where I'm from. So they, you know, well, you've been not playing over here. You know, whatever, I'm, I'm hooping with you. We gonna play. So a lot of times I fought my way to the court. And after that, people gained respect. So as I got older, I know this game member. I know that game member. I know this guy. I know that OG. I know that OG. I became almost like I was immune. So that turned into me starting to bounce. Once I started bouncing down in the, in the clubs, it was, it was so easy to be safe is what I thought. Mm-hmm. And I'll never forget. Oh, <laughs> Let me interrupt the, uh, one second. I was a bouncer also, mm-hmm. and it's no such thing as a safe No, it was no, it's no. No, it wasn't. It, it absolutely wasn't. Yeah. You just felt, you know, like yeah. you felt this false sense of security mm-hmm. being in that space. And uh, so be, due to the fact that I was downtown and the, the, knowing certain, having familiarity with some of the gangs and the drug dudes around, they come in, it's all good. Something happened, they, they got me too. And uh, 2004 is when I was stabbed. 2003, a good friend of mine died in my arm, Scott Marshall. He, um, he was stabbed five times. And uh, for me, I don't know what it was being a young kid. It was like, this will never happen to you. This will never happen to you. So after that, I got into an altercation with somebody, and they told me, they said, hey, man, let's go to this island and work, which because, you know, we gym owners too. So we, uh, we had the first gym on the island called Puddin' Bay, Muscle Bay Fitness. And back then, they told me to come there just because I was doing too much. Mm-hmm. And I went there. They said, you can, you can just chill, lay low here. Well, at the time, I was the only black employee on the island. So that was, I was not laying low. You know? yeah, <laughs> that, was, yeah. that, was, that was almost foreign. So, and then I, and that, that, was, that helped me a lot because... I got familiar, I never was around that many, you know, white people and, and people who embraced because we never seen past the street corner almost mm-hmm. or the neighborhood or whatever we was familiar with. So that also got me introduced to different music, live bands. I love live bands. Mm-hmm. And I never would have done that before. So it was, it helped in that sense, but then energy. Because just because you walk away from something don't mean that energy is still not lingering. So that night, July 24th, 2004, Fight broke out, was stabbed nine times, rushed to the hospital, they had to life flight me, was in the middle of an island. I mean, flatlined, uh, medically induced coma in and out. I was 245 when I went, got up at like 150 pounds. And what scared me about that is it didn't scare me. Ooh. And, and, that, and, and as I grew, and I understood how, men- how mentally messed up that was because I was just happy to be alive. Yeah. And the fact that it didn't scare me, and I mean, it had some serious injuries too. My test and my damage and test this one was on the outside of me, but I mean, it was, it was bad. And the fact that it was, the lesson was being taught because I didn't freak, 
I, I watched the whole process go down up until they cut me open and put me in the emergency tube and put me under. I remember it step by step. And it didn't click to me until like six, seven years later. Like, dude, you're not even supposed to be here. Yeah. So a lot of that, a lot of transitions happened. My oldest daughter, she's 17 now. Um, her mother dropped her off and never came back. So I went through a lot of things in that period of time that helped me grow. But when I really had to accept the fact that we don't have control. Yeah. You know, we don't have control. What we can't control is what we're doing in this particular situation. But when it's your time to go, it's your time to go. And the fact that somebody else was allowing that to be the case, that person almost dictated that for me. Yep. Then it hit me years later. I didn't get to thinking about now, it hit me years later. So a lot of things got different. I still was the same. I became more, I became more conversation. Now I can talk like, hey man, what's, what's the problem? And I, I developed that and that's why I'm glad that it switched because I still had that. Then martial arts, martial arts is around. I'm a, you know, I'm a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I fought MMA for 11 years. So that helped, but MMA also was still, was still not therapy for me because punching somebody still was, was almost, you know, orgasmic. It was almost like, bang, I need, and then I thought it was helping, but it still had me outside of competition feeling like if somebody say something, it's time to go. You fight every day training. So if I had a situation where that was the case, then I hear I go fight again. 2008, I almost caught a case on a situation that I felt I, should, I couldn't walk away from. But in, in Ohio, at that time, it was no Sandra Graw law, self-defense, nothing. So pretty much the judge had told me, hey man, listen, could you have left? <laughs> well, no, sir, they was, sir, I'm asking you again. Was your back against the wall? Was it an exit? I would've, yeah, if I would've ran, that's what I wanted to hear. So you need to go talk to your lawyer before I put you in jail for five years for as long as so. Mm. Cause I was telling my lawyer, man, I'm not, man, I was defending myself. He like, what are you doing, dude? There's no such thing. So I remember, I'll never forget, I went home when my daughter looked like, oh, yeah, we gonna take that plea down. <laughs> I'm not, we're good. I'll take whatever they need me to do. Yeah. So, you know, I wind up getting off with that. You know, they didn't show up to court the last, you know, a few times, so I wound up getting off with a fine. And after that, I was like, man, I have to chill. So that's what happened. I really got focused in on the martial arts, started teaching kids. I started a, a, a movement called I Stop the Bully, where I was going around speaking to schools about anti-bullying and things in that generation. I was speaking from the perspective of somebody who I was a bully. You know, mm -hmm. I'll be honest. And um, so I use martial arts for them as a, as a way, jujitsu as a way to, for them to be comfortable. And then I seen it was bigger than that. So that led to me becoming a children's book author. And- uh, What's the name of the book? Uh, the New Kid. The New Kid. The and, New Kid. And what's it about? It's a, uh, it started off just a story of a new kid coming to the school. Just things that I seen in the school because I have a behavior intervention business where I go into schools and deal with behavioral kids. So I seen these stories and I just wrote, put them together. And it went from that and, and man, much love to Dusha Management, Sean Reed and Cheryl Reed, cause they really jumped on it and was like, hey man, let's make it a comic book. You, you a big guy, let's, and they did. And I, I'll never forget when he sent me the email of the first page and I was like, oh my God. Cause I never, I just wrote a story. I never thought that all of those things would change, and that's what I say about energy. My energy was shifting, so these things were starting to become. So that was published in 2018, and uh, I spoke, man, all over. And I spoke at colleges, I spoke with every elementary, even preschool. It gets like that now, with the little, little ones. Mm. So I spoke at preschools, uh, you know, just speaking on that, on, on how to be confident, how to be aware of certain situations, how, and even more so for people like me. I was insecure. I was a little dude. I wore a size 11 and a half shoe in the fourth grade, but I was only this tall. Oh, so man. my head and my feet didn't match my body. <laughs> so I used to get picked on. So what I would do is I became a jokester. And then I also would fight. So then a lot of people were like, man, he can't take a joke. Cause if, you, if somebody laughed too hard, then we fight. Mm. So that's where that bully mentality came from. So I just decided to develop these. And I was more so focusing on the kids, not, I mean, everybody, but who was actually bullying because if you feel comfortable with yourself, you wouldn't pick on nobody else. So it all led up to this and led up to where I'm at today. You know, today, even the fitness is separate. 
but you know, all of these things was because of my energy was shifting. All these things helped make Kong who Kong is. Yeah, absolutely. Now, we have, man, Mr. T talk, we have uh, so many things in common that you probably, I don't know if you even know, but uh, you said you watched your dad abuse your mom. Yeah. <clears throat> that that uh, will affect you yeah. and your life. Uh, I watched the same thing. And, and my dad was a preacher. Mm -hmm. So he in church every Sunday and Friday and Tuesday and every chance, yeah. you know, we was in church all the time. Well, then he go home and slap my mama down. Right. So that, that uh, I, I could relate to that part of your story. It, yeah. it will give you uh, some mental problems. Yeah. Anger, anger issues. Yeah. That you know, you're like, damn, where is this coming from? But, but uh, you, uh, I, and you know, I was abused also. He didn't just abuse my mom. Did, did, were you? He you, never, he never with me. Oh my god! He, he never, he never with me. He never developed that energy towards me. And you know, shout out to my mom for being. My mother's four eleven, and man, if if every, I think she has the power of every Chihuahua in the world. Because <laughs> she, I tell you what, my brother got off easy because she never played. Her mm -hmm. and my grandmother never played, and she was strong through that. So that was one of the big things where a lot of my inner strength come from as well, was watching, not understanding what I'm seeing, but this is what she's doing. And shout out to my father too. Me and him did not have a good relationship until I was 30, and I'll be 41 next week. So for uh, me and him, he's in my life now, and it's like my best friend, because one thing about him is where he is now, he knows, you know, he knows that, that that place where he was 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 foul, vital, and he went through a lot. He went through a lot to where he's now paralyzed himself, and he live, has to live in the home. And I and and you know one thing about it is without that, I don't know if we would have that relationship. Mm -hmm. But it did bring us closer. And he's he's a great resident there, even though he hates him. Yeah. He's a great resident there, and uh, but his life changed a lot. And much love to my mother because my mother never told me not to develop that. Mm. My mother would tell me things like, you know, I heard your father was sick and you could give him a call. And I'm like, nope, nope, until he really got bad one time. And then I took over all of his affairs the last few years. And that's my dude, man. So I, I know he gonna watch it. Don't be calling my phone. Or I'll call you later. <laughs> he, uh, but man, he, we talk every day, man. And, and it's just, so I, I did, I was able to have that healing. Is what I'm saying. I was man, able to have that healing. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, my dad, and I, my dad lived to be uh, 86 years old, and I went my whole life uh, waiting for that dude to say, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and Pops would have said, I'm, all, all that stuff during the childhood, the broken noses, and emergency room visit, if he'd have said, I'm sorry, Kong, mm -hmm. I was, I'd have been straight, man. I erased all, I would have been, be waking up at night, you know, punching and, and kicking out. Uh, I would all that would have been could have saved me a whole lot of trouble. Yeah. I just wanted to hear, yeah. you know, that he was sorry that he thought. Well, like your, I'm sure your dad was. He, like you said, he knew. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, and, and 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 I'm sure he expressed that to you. Yeah, he did. He he tried one time when he was real sick, and I was like, Nah, I want to hear. So let's move forward. And one time he just said, even though I went through all that, I never disrespected. No. Me and, you know, he, he get on me now. You know, about, he kind of seen, you know, I got off of Facebook because a lot of uh, worldly things was going on, social, and, just, and then you kind of see people, how they act. So I was on Facebook and I was letting some of the old me come out. And then he called me, man, you know you ain't supposed to be acting like that. <laughs> so like, All right, man, all right. So I, I never, I never disrespected that man and, uh, but that's what it took was him to insist. No, you listen to me, man. I'm about to apologize to you. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you want to hear it. Let me get this off my chest. Man. And, uh, and when he did, I was like, okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. You know, you, you, as a kid, you wait for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it, it really does mean a lot. Yeah. So uh, if there's any parents out there that have been fucking up, uh, you, you, you've been too big and too prideful to say you're sorry to your kid. Cut that shit out. Tell, tell that motherfucker you're sorry. Man. And, it's, and, it's, and it's a thing too, man. And I, 
And, 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 and what you pointed out was me being myself. I don't, when it, it took me so long to be a part of this space. I've always was intrigued by it, but it was like, man, I got to, I got to be 100% transparent. This is who I am. And even if we fault, you know, and um, I got uh, three biological children then I helped raise two since they, I mean, the one, I would never ever say that's not my biological father was never in her life. That's, that's, that's Your the baby. Yeah, that's mine. Absolutely. My middle daughter, we, we, we kind of have, we, we do have a very strange relationship. And a lot of that is on me. Matter of fact, I, you know, I don't blame nobody. It was very mature. I was very mature how I deal with it. And even to this, you know, even to this day, that's something that I need to grow from. When you, when you check your boxes, you make sure you check the stuff that you ain't doing right to. So, you know, I know a lot of people say, well, about the mom? I don't care about what she does. She's a great mom, and she also has a great husband who's the father to her. He is, and I'm a man enough to admit that. He is doing a great job. So even if I can be, let me be number two, even though she looks just like me. I just want that relationship. She relationship with her sister, that's great, and her brother. But I need to work myself back into it. It's not, it's not their fault. You right. know what I'm saying? So when, when that's something, that's another one of my goals. That's a goal just like anything else. And I, I try to tell these people all the time, hey, man, we have a responsibility. I know, and, and I don't have crazy baby mama drama, I don't have that, but uh, I do have a thing, that, a void that I need to be filled. It's a goal, just like we have goals to make this money or go this place. My goal is, one of them is for my middle daughter to have this relationship again. So, you know, we just, we just gotta open, it, we gotta be honest. Absolutely. And th that's why I say people online, nobody can say nothing to me, because I'm gonna tell you about it. Yeah. You know, I'm going to tell you, I can never be exposed. This is what it is, yeah. you know, and I, and I, and I want to talk mainly because I want people to learn. If you're dealing with that, I know a lot of guys go through that, but that's still your daughter or your son. Let's get it together. Now, I know that uh, you and my, my adopted son, Calvin Muscle, they're pretty close. Man. How did that all happen? First of all, man. You know, that dude, man, so I take it back. A friend of mine, DeMar Greer, passed away December of 2019, cancer. Didn't tell nobody. Just died, was scared, and just wanted to go. Uh, he introduced me to watching Kelly. He sent me a video years ago. He said, man, look at your brother, man. And I looked at him, man, who was this dude? So I started, like, this is when I first really started dealing with YouTube. And uh, I'm starting to watch him, and then I'm seeing everything that he was doing was who I was. I was a clown. I do little comedic skits, things like that. I do those things too. And uh, I'm watching, I'm like, man, I really like that dude. So that introduced me to YouTube fully. And that's when I seen your video. The first video I seen of you was with the Hulk. And I probably, you got over 20 something million views. I think I might be 18 now. <laughs> I watched that video over and over again. So, uh, so, so that's how I happened. So then I was friends with him on my personal Facebook. And a couple months before the gym opened in 2017, I was doing a live video. He just hopped on there. So, you know, I don't know if it's a real page or not. Yeah. So I didn't acknowledge it at first. And then I heard one to it. I'm like, oh, that is him. And we started talking. And uh, one day he popped on and we did a Facebook Live together and we just started talking and talking and he said, hey, I'm moving from Vegas back to California, I'm, what's your number? And we exchanged numbers and came out here in November of last year and that dude, I mean, I can't say enough about that dude. Really? You know, and, I, and, you know, and like, he, he's funny, he, he's so macho, yeah? yeah? He's so macho yeah. that when I tell him, he like, yeah, okay, bro, much love. Man, don't be talking to me like I'm one of your supporters. Man, you better <laughs> acknowledge the fact that, hey, dude, I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. So, Callie, next time I tell you something, man, stop giving me that cookie-cutter response that you do to everybody yeah, else. Yeah. But uh, he, he doesn't understand because, Mr. Fletcher, I went through a lot in the last, from that time that November hit till now. This, this thing I'm doing is not something that was a, I, I wasn't ready. I wasn't mentally in it. I had a lot going on. I lost DeMar. Then I, a guy that we, it's a picture of me and it's all three of us, and I'm the only one alive. These are starting to hit. DeMar didn't make it to 50. Pat didn't make it to 40. And uh, 
So before I went to see Cali, I lost him and then lost my grandmother. And my grandmother, which, you know, the queen. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother was who I ran to to tell on my mama to. <laughs> and uh, my, my kids was close to my grandmother. And, and a lot of people say uh, women can't raise a man. You could never tell that to her. Mm -mm. And my grandmother told me, I remember uh, our last conversation, I called her. And this is what's so amazing about my grandmother. I called her and we FaceTime and she eating Chick-fil-A and Rice Krispie Treats. <laughs> and I said, uh, and she looked good, you know? And I said, Grandma, uh, she said, when you coming back home? Because I'm on the island. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, I'll be back uh, Wednesday. And I said, don't be, made a joke. Don't be trying to go see granddad before I get home. She said, oh, well, I'll see you tomorrow. I said, no, Grandma, you heard what I said? She said, well, I'll see you tomorrow. And I remember months before that, my grandmother said, you know, the only thing I didn't control is when I got brought into this raggedy motherfucker. I'm telling you when I leave. And uh, I left the island that morning, and uh, she died at 12, 12.30, 12.30 p.m. I left about 6.30, got there 7.30. And uh, that was a blow. That was yeah. that one, man, that, even to this, <laughs> even to this day. That one, that one staying. So I was in a bad space. And then I go to California or come to LA. Then I meet Cali and it's like we never, we, it's not, there was no introduction. We write out to it and that's how we've been ever since. And he, watching him, him text and say, try this, do this, do this, is motivating. And this being here now, being a creator, you know, I edit all the videos, I make all the graphics. Those things, he, he brought that back out of me because that was something that I've always enjoyed. I just didn't have the motivation to do so. So he brought that all out of me, man. And shout out to Big Boy too. They, they was able to put me on the platform and even being here today. You know, like this is something, these, these are things that people go sit at the expos and wait for. And in seven months, I'm able to be, you know, a part of Hyphy and, and be in videos with Big Boy and then come sit here. Like this is, and how I, how I did with you, I, it is funny. I had made a video, and I said at the end of the video, I said, look, if you support me for real, it wasn't even done. I said, if you support me for real, go to C.T. Fletcher page and say, do a collab with Kong, right? Didn't even edit it. I go to sleep, and then I look at saying you have followed me back. I said, like, oh, shoot. So then when I messaged you and you spoke back, you said, hey, man, all you got to do is show up. So I had went back to the video. I was like, hold on, let me add a little bit more. Like, no, don't do that now. He had came through. So it was, it's, it's just crazy to think because, you know, what I was going to do is I remember watching you talk about Joe Rogan. And you said that he was sending everybody here so he could pay you attention. I said, you know what, I'm going to get him back with his own tricks here. This work. And then we sit here. So it's like, for me, this, this, this is unreal, you know. I'm going to tell you, uh, <laughs> I, did, I did do that with Joe Rogan. I was talking shit. <laughs> And I'm doing everything I could. I was like, Joe Rogan don't know what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm that. trying to get uh, Joe Rogan <laughs> to, to notice me. Yeah. None of, none of, you know, he noticed me, but in a bad way. I'm like, because Joe was like, you know, if all any any guy with muscles, he going to tie up and get tight during the fight. He's going to gas out because of all the muscles. Right. I said, Joe, you know what the fuck you talking about. Mm -hmm. It, it makes a big ass difference. If the guy got all the muscles in the gym, yeah. you know, he built all his muscles in the gym, he lifting weights, and that's, he came here, didn't have no muscles, right. but then he got them all through lifting weights and pumping iron, and that's how he got his muscles, then you're correct. But if some cats that are born yeah. naturally more muscular than 99% of the right. dudes on the planet, they just born naturally more muscular than the other guys. Right. I said, that cat was born muscular. He looked, he, he, you look at him and say, oh, well, this guy got to be in the gym, yeah, lifting yeah. weights all the time. But it's a lot of cats, that ain't, they, they don't lift weights at all, but they look like they do. Right. I said, you catch a cat like that, that was born muscular, born cat, he ain't going to gas out, Joe. Yeah. He was born like that. That's naturally how he's built. You judge the book by the cover. If that cat was born naturally, yo, naturally, split up because it's I know people like that yeah. I'm sure everybody knows somebody like that yep. if he was born with the muscles it's different between built muscles and born muscles if he's born like that they, they, the rules don't apply right. and then I named a few you know fighters you know Yoel Romero he's 
He's oh, uh, man. Uh, even in, even the uh, the welterweight champion right now, he, the, uh, from Africa, cut oh, all yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Guzman, Guzman, yeah, man. Cut all up. And he looks like he's staying in the gym, lifting yeah. weights up. Don't lift no weights. Rip the pieces. Don't gas out. Don't get tired. So I started naming examples of, and you know, but we we hit it off the wrong the wrong right. foot. He's like, oh, man. I said, I tell you, don't know what the fuck you talking about. And, he, and, he t- and then when I finally made it on the show, it wasn't, it wasn't for that. It wasn't yeah. because, you know, we had to. But once I got on it, we talked about it. Yeah, that was cool. And I like, I like Joe Rogan has such a, uh, a great perspective of, of everything. But even the fight game, I love hearing him talk. Man. I love hearing him talk. He's one of the best uh, commentators, or no commentators better. No, he, no, he, absolutely. He, no, 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 nobody can match him. The dude is, uh, he, he knows it in, yep. inside and out. And... On the side, a really good person. Uh-huh. Once I got to actually know him, sit down and talk with him, you know, he had me on the show twice, and uh, we got to be good friends. Uh-huh. And he he is really a good person. Yeah. He's helped me out, like Callie helped you out, uh-huh. um, just because. Right. Nothing in it for him whatsoever. Right. He ain't getting nothing out of it. But I call, hey Joe, I need, can you do this for me? No problem. No problem, Sixty. And I ain't nobody, you know, I'm a little, nobody know the fuck I uh, Man, I hear you say that Joe, about it, man. <laughs> I mean, everybody know this one. <laughs> and for, you know, somebody to take the time to do that for you, know, just like you and Callie, yeah. you really appreciate it. Callie's a, a good dude. Ever since I've known him, you know, like I say, like my son, he don't change. You know, hey, Pops, how you doing, man? I love you, man. It's, and he's, you know, like you said, Captain Hard. Yeah. Okay, but that's that's my son, man. I love you, man. I love you too, Cal. And I, Carl, when I was growing up, I would never tell a, a, another dude, you, I love him. Hell no. Right. You don't do right. that. Right. Same way. That's, that's out the motherfucking question. Yeah. Hell, it took a whole lot of living yeah. for me to get to that point where I can tell, hey, I, I love you. No, yeah. no, I ain't got no problem saying that shit now. But coming up, shit, in Compton, are you yeah. talking about the Crips? <laughs> that's where, that's where that's it started. That's where it started, right, right. To tell them motherfucker you love them? Oh, hell no. You be run out of, you, now you that's probably get true. shot. That's the truth. <laughs> motherfucker, what you talking about? And see, that's the that's thing where, where I'm at now is that, uh, again, being transparent. The emo- mm-hmm. Now that I'm able to do that, the last 10, 12 years of my life, I'm able to, and it took a long time to get there, because I, I had a buddy, uh, another buddy that passed away, and he, you know, he, it's, it's one that still hit a little bit. He would say it all the time, I love you, bro, I love you, bro. And uh, when he died, you know, I said it at his casket. And, uh, mm. and, and, and Jerry Bear was that, man, that, that effect, just that everybody loves us, dude. And that's how he was. And again, me and him from two different parts of the planet. He from a little different, where he, you know, where, like I said, me coming from the neighborhood I'm from, that's not even thought of. Yeah. And even the, even the women, man, it took, my, it took the women in my family because they had to be so hard for us. Yep. It took them a long time to say that type of stuff, too. Oh, hell yeah. So when he died, and uh, I would, he would text me, and I would just ignore it. I would just say something back, like, man, shut up, you know? But uh, now I'm getting to this space. This is this is all, and and I think that we feel like sometimes the male ego, especially when you're from a certain place, we feel like we're showing too much of being soft. Mm-hmm. And exactly. you know, and and for me, it's like no, I still smack the shit out you. <laughs> but but I you, but, but I get, you know what I'm saying. So <laughs> if I'm good, we good. You know what I mean. And I think that showing that side, it kind of take the bite off of what people would mentally think about you. And I think that's why a lot of these things that I got going on now is working because they can see that side. That's why I do a lot of the comedy stuff too. I love making people laugh. Because it was a time that I didn't I didn't have it. I was a silly dude, but you had to be close to me to see that. Mm-hmm. Now I want everybody to see that. You know, I want everybody to see, oh that's that dude silly. So when you when we do meet I, I'm approachable. I like to talk. I like to have a conversation. And uh, at the same time, like I said, I'm still me. But if you in that space, we good. And I think it took, it took a long time to really develop that, develop that being open, because you're so guarded. You grew up around drug addicts, gang members, drug dealers. Like, 
you don't know how to take certain people. You weren't around certain areas. Now, whoever, you know, whoever, wherever, well, whatever, religion, whatever, I don't care. We good, we all good, you know. Yo, it don't make you no difference. It don't make me no difference. It but don't make me no difference, just man. Just love people. Just, just love people. You good to me, you good to me. And you know, that's just it. And, and I, I think if the world would be a whole lot of better, better place if everybody felt like that. Yeah. Yeah, and that's another. That's one of my goals on the, on the building the platform is when when you look at when you look at certain people, you get that image. And that's what I was saying. People look at me, and I I, I don't ever want to be viewed as a tough guy because I always tell people when they say, "Oh, you for oh, the black belt jujitsu?" Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, but I wrote a children's book too. That's cooler than that, I think. Oh yeah. Being a father, that's cooler than that. Oh, but people yeah. only see, oh, he big and. That's cool, but I wrote a children's book, you know. So I kind of, I kind of, I kind of like that better than looking like the tough guy. I don't ever want to look like the tough guy, you know. And muscles, you, we know this. Muscles don't make you tough anyway. Hell no. So I hope that <laughs> don't ever get that twisted. Yeah. Today. Don't yes, ever. Get, yeah. I've seen a lot of strong ones. Yeah, my. <laughs> <laughs> Have to change their dental plan up, yeah. but. So I, I I just want to develop that different, you know, and you know who like that is uh, I watched you know a lot, follow the rock a lot, mm -hmm. and and you know who he, every what he what you would perceive of him from some of the roles he played, and then you see him playing something called the uh, two fair, yeah yeah, and then you see that yeah, and it's that side of rock, so stuff like that, man, you know I don't it's those days is over, yeah, you know those days is over, like you know, be approachable. I don't mind. I don't mind having a conversation. I don't care where I'm at, as long as it's not the wrong energy. And I don't ever want to give that off again because it never got me anywhere. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, we're gonna wrap up the interview. Yes. When you, I want. Okay. You told me. Uh, and another one of my goals is this. And another one of my goals is I want you to sum up what your goals are. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna see what the cone, Midwest cone is made out of. You ain't gonna come down to the goddamn Valley of the Peace no, sir. without being tested. Didn't plan on it, didn't we gonna was ready. Take you on over there yeah. and put you to the test. Okay, now I'm not good at those. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give it a work. Well, I so, ain't got no pants on no paper. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got to check no boxes. We so, gonna give a different kind of test. So one, my, my main goal is, is to do, is to develop a platform to where people can not not brag on what I do, but be inspired and 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 learn. And uh, fitness is cool. Everybody lift weight, like you said. But uh, what are we getting out of these things? What are we getting out of being in a in a certain light? And like I said, man, and and I hear you say this a lot. I'm just a little, Mr. Fletcher. I don't think you understand. We had a conversation. You said. You know, this is what we're gonna do. That's all I got, cause you know this situation. And I said I was fine with the follow. I didn't even have to be here. But that type of platform I want to build. The, the the unexpected. Oh, well, Dad, come on, come on, my gym muscle bay fitness. Let's let's get it in. I want people. Just what you're doing for me. What Cali has done for me. The the love big boy has shown. And I'm I'm a grown man. I ain't no little kid. But I felt like that when I came into these situations. So I want to build a platform and do the same for others as I, as I move forward and be inspirational. Yeah, left the waist is cool, jujitsu was cool, but there's other things about life that can put all that together and people can be successful at it. And mental health is a big thing too and I like to touch on that with people. So I just want to build a platform of, of, of people loving people, man, and, and dope energy, man. And I truly appreciate, like, it is a complete privilege being here. And even, like I said, even the follow back. So Mr. Fletcher, man, Thank you so much for this, man. Thank you so much for me. I, I couldn't wait to be here. I couldn't wait. You gave me that time and day. If I had to swim here, I was coming. Man. <laughs> and I want to extend this to you like I tell Callie, man. Anybody who do, I'm, gratitude was a big thing for me. So like I say, man, anybody who do, is the smallest amount of thing for me, you, you, you fed the straight dog. So ain't nobody ever going to be able to tell me nothing different about you. I, you, got, you got a good one in me, man. So I greatly appreciate it. And I know you got Iron Wars coming up. We, you know, you want to wrap up, so I'm going to wrap up with this. It's a, you had a gentleman on here. I mean, I love this dude. The way he talked and it, that energy he bring, and 
I messed around, had him up too loud one day, scared me in my headphones. <laughs> and he, the inspirational story he had, which I'm glad you had him on. And uh, I'm watching it, and I'm like, man, this is cool, because one of my good friends is from Africa as well. So I see this gentleman on there, and he got a name tag to him. It's called Champ. Mm -hmm. And Indio uh, Champ. Indio Champ. And you know what else he do? He do the 225 a lot. Uh-huh. So I think I'm pretty good at that. We had the 225 rep off. So, you know, my Indio Champ, man, you know, when you put that champ on the end of your name, you got to expect the challenge. Uh-oh. So I know Iron Wars is coming up, and I know you like your particular way of doing the, the 225 bench off. And all due respect, because I love your content, I follow you, but I think I want to go ahead and get that champ a run. Uh-oh, you heard it here first. So. NBO champ is a good, good friend of mine. He's be here at Iron Wars. Yeah. And we got Midwest Calm versus NBO champ, 225 rep off. Don't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you motherfuckers for watching CT Fucking Motivation on YouTube. Like, subscribe, don't like, don't subscribe, I don't give a fuck either way. <laughs> but what you do need to do is take your punk ass over to ctfuckers.com and buy something. Cause I fucking said so.